So today I'm continuing my journey around the color wheel. I have tested or compared um, quite a few different of uh, the primary um, colors. So the yellows, the blues, and the reds. And today I am moving to the secondary color wheel. So starting with greens, um, I have sap green hue and hooker green hue, which are two very popular convenience greens. Now, not everyone needs to get a green color for their acrylic um, paint palette, but um, a lot of people find that having a mixed green or a convenience green is really handy so that you ha don't have to do um, the initial mixing of certain greens. Um, they are, you can mix these using your primary colors, um, but it's a lot quicker and easier just to use uh, green from the tube. And then you can make some, mix uh, these greens with other colors to then further the greens that you have uh, and can mix fairly quickly. So I'm just going to do some mixing with some of the primary colors. Um, let's see, I have them listed on the sheet already, but these are the tubes. So we've got Cad Lemon, we've got an almost empty Cad Yellow Medium. We have two blues, Thalo Blue Green Shade and Ultramarine Blue. We have two reds, Quin Magenta and Cadmium Red, and then I've added in a couple of the secondary colors, so a Cadmium Orange and a Dioxazine Purple just to see, and of course Titanium White so that I can uh, show some of the shades because a lot, a lot of times the initial mix um, between the pure colors will be quite dark and it can be hard to tell what you're really dealing with. So um, a couple notes on sap green and hooker's green. So sap green was originally created um, by from the juice of a berry. So you'll find that a lot of your paints in the store you'll see is sap green hue because it's not the original. The original color was not light fast. Another note about sap green is that every manufacturer has their own combination and own, own mixture of pigments that they use to create sap green. So not all sap greens are created equal. So for this one, if you look on the back um, of the golden tube, it tells you which red, which, which yellow, which green, and which black were used to create sap green. Other manufacturers might use different pigments or they might use the same pigments, but in a different combination. So just be aware that the results that I'm getting here today might be different if you're using a different brand. Um, and Hooker's Green Hue, this is named after William Hooker, and so that's his last name. And he created, um, or this was named after him because he used a green. He was a botanical illustrator back in the 1900s. Um, he used, I believe it was Prussian Blue and Gamboge, which is a type of yellow, to make a green that he really liked using for his botanical illustrations. Now again, this is a hue because the version he used, uh, the Gamboge, I believe, wasn't light fast. So now manufacturers are creating their own version of Hooker's Green that is much more light fast. Okay, so now let's get started. So we'll start with the sap green, just a pure sap green. I know sap green is hugely popular. Um, I know I've used it in all in acrylics and in uh, watercolor quite a bit and uh, I really like it. I'm just gonna add a bit of white just to start seeing what some of the what some of the undertones are. Getting to see some of the variety you can get just straight out of the tube. Do one more with a lot of white. There you go. There's your first look at Sap Green Hue, the golden version. Now let's look at Cadmium Lemon. So this is Cadmium Lemon with quite a bit of the Sap Green in it. Add a little bit of white and there you go it's not too far off the thing about uh, sap green hue of course green is yellow mixed with um, blue 
So you add a bit of yellow and it's not necessarily going to be dramatically different. And let's take a look at a version with more yellow in it and add a bit of white to that. There you go. Let's look at cadmium yellow medium hue. So here's the version with a lot of the sap green. Add a bit of white. And here's the version with a lot of the yellow in it. So you can get a nice warm green if that's what you're looking for. And some white added to it. Now I've heard that you can see, the human eye can see a lot more shades of green than uh, you can of any other color, which is one of the reasons why green is, I think, a really tricky color because uh, you, uh, you can really see, see when it's wrong or feels wrong. Now I did phthalo blue green with a lot of the, the uh, sap green, and there it is with a bit more white. So you can see it's really, really dramatically different. I mean, not unexpected because now we're moving around the color wheel. And here is sap green mixed with a lot of phthalo blue. And add some white so we can really see what we're dealing with. There you go. It's quite a dramatically different color. Now let's move on to ultramarine blue. Here it is with a lot of the sap green. And add a bit of white. There we go. That's quite different than the uh, phthalo blue that's just above it. Now let's take a look at ultramarine with a lot of, or a lot of ultramarine with a little bit of sap green. Just add a little more there and then get some white. There you go. See the mix with the ultramarine blue is a lot, a lot more muted than it is with the phthalo blue. Okay, Quinn Magenta. Here is a lot of sap green with a little bit of Quinn Magenta. Add some white so you can see what we're dealing with. There you go. Definitely a much more brown shade. And then with a lot of Quinn Magenta and just a little bit of sap green. And some white. Just add a little more white there so you can see a little better. There you go. So you can get a nice muted uh, magenta color, or you can get really just a lovely brown. Now, cadmium red. Here it is with a lot of the green. Add a bit of white. It's not perfectly mixed. I'm running out of room on my palette with this large group of colors. But uh, you can see it's this version is a nice green muddy color, greeny brown. And let's do lots of cadmium red with a bit of the green and the white with that. More white. Okay, 
cadmium orange. So a lot of the green mixed with cadmium orange right here. And some white. There you go. Not too, too far off the cadmium red mix above, um, in this case, definitely greener, more of an olivey color. Um, another thing to keep in mind as you're looking at uh, the mixes I'm doing here, I'm not really uh, making sure that I have a specific amount or aiming for a certain color. It's really just what's one, one version with a lot of, in this case that I just put down, a lot of the orange and just a little bit of the um, sap green. So if you really want to investigate how a color um, mixes with another, it is definitely worth taking some time and just doing a whole bunch of color mixes. But this just gives you an idea of some colors you can get with uh, with a certain color. In this case, that green here. And so far, it's pretty uh, quite a few different colors um, that could be used. I think I think it would give you a nice. Uh, you're not going to have too many intense colors, at least not so far, based on what I've done. The, the only intense ones so far are the phthalo greens. Okay, dioxazine purple. There it is with a lot of the green and just a bit of the purple. Let's get some white in that. There we go. Kind of a gray-brown. You can definitely get really, really beautiful darks with the purple and the green, which is really common with uh, purples and greens to get a nice dark color. There we go. That is with a lot of the purple. Now, let's uh, mix that with the white. So that is the last of the mixes that I'll do for sap green. And now let's take a look at our hooker's green hue. So first we'll start off with just some of the pure color. Now let's mix it with some, some clean white over here. Mix it with some white. And one more with quite a bit of white. There you go. Here's some variety in the colors that you can get straight out of the two with just a bit of white mixed in. And you can see it's much less yellow of a color than the sap green. It has a lot more blue in it. So let's take a look at how it looks mixed with cadmium lemon. So there it is with a lot of the green. Add some white. And let's take a look at it with a lot of the yellow. And add some white in there. Okay, cadmium yellow medium hue. Here it is mixed with a lot of the sap green. Add a bit of white to that. And now with quite a bit of the cadmium medium yellow and add white to that. Phthalo blue green shade. Here it is with a lot of the hooker's green. Now we'll add some white to that. Maybe a little more white. Now 
phthalo blue green again, but with a lot of the blue. And let's get some white for that. So it too is a pretty intense shade. Now, I mean, that's not surprising. Phthalo blue itself is a fairly intense color. Um, I really like phthalo blue and how you can get mixes with it. And if you're a little worried about the intensity of it, you can always just use some other colors to reduce the intensity. So there's ultramarine blue with a lot of the sap green. Have some white. Here's Hooker's Green with a lot of ultramarine. And add some white to that. Next up, Quinn Magenta with a lot of the sap green. Or sorry, not sap green, Hooker's Green. So there you go, Quinn Magenta. Nice dark color. And then we'll add a bit of white. There you go. It's, a, it's definitely quite a gray color. Gray with a bit of almost blue undertones. And Quinn Magenta, a lot of Quinn Magenta and a bit of the Hooker's Green. Cadmium red is up next. So a little bit of cadmium red and a lot of the hooker's green. Again, nice dark color. Let's add some white to that. Let's see what we get. It's hard to see in my brush a little, so I don't have so much of the pure color on it. And then add a bit of the white. Again, another muted, grayed out, kind of greenish color. And with a lot of cadmium red. White to that. So if you're finding your reds when you're painting are too intense, you can add a bit of green to it and really uh, mute down the color so you can see it there and also with the sap green as well because they're opposites on the color wheel. Okay, cadmium orange with a lot of the hooker green. And now I'll add some white. And cadmium orange with quite a bit of the orange and just a bit of the green. It's a good muddy orange. Add some white to that. And our last color, dioxazine purple mixed with a lot of the hooker's green. Again, a really nice dark. Purples and greens often make really nice darks. And there you go. And one last pair of mixes. So a lot of the dioxazine. Oh, Out of the dioxazine purple. And I'll add just a bit of white to that. And there you go. Nice muted purple. Let's clean my brush one last time. So 
So while green isn't a necessary uh, part of a color palette, I have a ton of tubes of green, so I'm going to be doing a few videos, just doing some mixing comparisons, um, to see which ones do I want to keep on my palette. Um, sap green is immensely popular. Um, I think it's really beautiful, warm green. Um, and when you're doing landscapes, you're constantly looking for a warm green. Hooker's green, I mean, you can see that it's definitely more of a bluer green. So I think it's probably less useful for the sort of painting I do, but I wouldn't necessarily say that I don't like it because I think it makes some um, really, really beautiful colors as well. And I'm also really partial to having um, blue greens on my palette. Um, but as I work through uh, these different mixing videos, I'll be learning which ones I do want to keep and which ones I probably won't buy in the future. And likely I probably wouldn't keep a hooker screen because I can use th the different thalos to help get um, that more of a bluey green as well, using some of my convenience greens, but also using, you know, my yellows and blues to um, do different mixes. So I hope you like this one. You can check out some other videos that I have um, mixing different colors throughout the color wheel on my YouTube channel and on my blog, theweekendbeckons.com. Um, and I will have more of these in the future.